All right, eighth grade Latin. Here we are picking up again in lesson 17 and finishing it, at least the instruction part of it today. Uh, let me pray for us. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you again for this way that we're able to meet together. Please continue to bless us in our schooling, encourage us, keep us safe in these, uh, in these challenging times. Father, we pray that you would uh, bless our learning. Help us to take every thought captive to the knowledge of Christ, we ask in his name. Amen. All right, just to review, we are talking about passive verbs. So we've learned that verbs have person, number, tense, and we've also learned now that they have voice, active and passive. So here are the passive verbs forms again. The ball is being thrown. The ball was being thrown or was thrown. The subject names the person or thing to which the action is done. Some examples. America is being praised by many nations. Christ was crucified by Roman soldiers. And again, here are the forms of the passive. There's the active. And here are the passions. Or ars atur, amor amini antur. So again, some overlap with the actives, but then we have all these ars in there. Or aris, atur, amor. But then the second plural, amini, we don't have the ars there. So um, just make sure that you're being able to recognize the presence of these ars indicating to you passive forms. All right, so what we're completing, and this is going to be something that's going to come up time and time again when you see passive verbs, is that if the subject is a passive, make sure you're turning in your book now to page 185, lesson 17.4, page 185. If the subject is a passive verb is being acted upon, a prepositional phrase with ob or a expresses the living agent. Okay, so what do I mean by a living agent? Well, um, you know, the world is governed by God. The soldiers were encouraged by Caesar. In other words, it's, it's like a human being or a group of human beings uh, or a divine being, right? As opposed to, you know, he was hit by a rock. That would be a non-living agent. That's going to be called an ablative of means, and that's going to come up in the next chapter. But now we're talking about an ablative of agent. If you look in your Henley Grammar at section 764, that's the bottom of page 173, you can see some more explanation of this. You can see um, Deus abominibus laudator, God is being praised by men. So you've got your passive verb, laudator, your subject that's being acted upon, Deus and then your prepositional phrase, ab omnibus. Now, when do we use ab and when do we use a? Well, if it's before a vowel, the next word, the noun, has a vowel or an H, like hominibus, uh, that's treated as a vowel, then we use ab with the B. But if it doesn't, if it starts with a consonant, like adeo, by God, uh, a uh, homino or homini by a man. Um, or no, that's what we use ab in that, sorry, in that case. Ab omnibus, right, by men. So that's the distinction there. All right. Turn the page, and here is exercise 207. And so you're supposed to insert the proper form of ab or a. So by the king, and it's rege in the ablative case, so we're going to use a, a, a rege. And again, I'm not going to put the macrons in here. By the enemy, hustabus, and H is considered a vowel um, in most languages. Abhastabus, abhastabus. By the cavalry, equitibus. Ab equitibus, by Mary. Amaria starts with a consonant. Amaria. 
by all slaves. So we've got Aminibus Saturdays. So it's going to be Ab Aminibus Saturdays. Ab Aminibus. So you can see how the it kind of elides into the next word, Ab Aminibus. All right. Now we turn back to 185 and we have some new vocabulary. We've got a verb, conservo, which again does not exactly mean conserve, preserve. Then we have a conjunction, nom, which means for. So it's somewhat similar to like propter, um, but it, it introduces a sentence rather than a prepositional phrase. And then we've ab, we have ab. Now make sure that you realize that ab does not always mean by. In fact, in your homework, you're going to have an instance where ab means from. Okay, so we had a form of the verb sum way back in chapter 14, I think it was. Absum, I am away from. Okay, now our review vocabulary at the top of the next page, they're both first conjugation verbs, voco, occupo, voco, and they're regular, so it's voco, vocari, vocavi, vocatus, right? Okay. All right, so let's look at the top of page 187 at exercise 208, and here's the first sentence. Pax amalitibus sepa non conservator, nam gloriae belli cupidi sunt. Nam gloriae belli cupidi sunt. So the first thing I want to recognize here is that we've got that comma, and we have a compound sentence, which means we have two sentences, right, that are joined together by this conjunction, a conjoining word, Sort of like if you had the word quote, which again, that's another word that sort of means because, kind of similar to nom. <clears throat> so how about the first sentence? Let's look at the first sentence. Pax amalitibus sepa non conservator. Can you identify the verb here? It is the verb conservator with the negative. Can you parse that verb for me? Person number tense voice. Person number tense voice. Well, it is a third singular, right? The t. It is present. There's no bomb. There's no bit. And it is passive, right? Tour. It's got that ur added to it. So peace is often not preserved. Peace is often not preserved. Pax is the subject. Now we've got this phrase, amelitibus, and there's our ablative of agent, right? It's an ablative case, plural, miles, militus. So peace is often not preserved by soldiers. So that's the first sentence. All right, now we go to the second sentence, and it's introduced by nam, nam gloriae belli cupidi sunt. Can you recognize the verb here? It's the verb sunt, they are. So the first sentence had a singular verb, conservator, referring to with peace as the subject, now we've got a plural verb. So what do you think the subject is here? Then we've got this word cupidy, cupidy, and that's a special adjective that means eager for, and the noun that it modifies has to take the genitive case. So that could be gloria or belly, but it's probably going to be the first one. Again, it's a special word that takes the genitive case. You know, similis was another one of those words. Those these these showed up way back in oh, what was it, lesson seven, maybe? So glory a belly, they are eager for the glory of war. So our final translation is going to come out. Peace is often not preserved by soldiers, for they are eager 
for the glory of war. So in other words, the second sentence is explaining, is providing the reason for the first sentence. Why is peace often not preserved? Because these soldiers are eager for the glory of war. They don't want peace, they want war. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at number four. Number four. Post proilium nos ab imperatore confirmabamor. Confirmabamor. Post proilium nos ab imperatore confirmabamor. So, how about the verb? What's the verb? Well, like most Latin sentences, we've got our verb at the very end. So let's try to parse it. What's the person, number, tense, and voice? So pause the video and see if you can parse this verb, confirmabamor. It's first person plural. It's imperfect, right? Ba. Bamba spot, bama spot to spot, and it's passive. So bamus would be the present active or the imperfect active, first plural, but this is bamor. So we've replaced the S with an R, which changes it from an active to a passive. We were being strengthened. We were being encouraged. Ab imperatore. So there's our use of ab with an ablative to indicate the agent. Who was doing the encouraging? We were the ones being encouraged and strengthened. Who was doing the strengthening? It was the general. By the general. He's the living agent that's doing the action. So after the battle... We were being encouraged by the general, or we were encouraged. We were being encouraged as a better job of expressing the imperfect. Now, what about nos? Well, nos is the first person plural pronoun, meaning we, or it could mean us, right? It can be accusative or nominative. In this case, it is the subject, it's the nominative. So you don't have to have that there, but they're just helping you understand that this verb is a first person plural. So they put the first person plural pronoun. So for your assignment, I want you to do um, sentences two to three and five to eight in 208. And notice how they not only want you to translate it, but they want to uh they want you to underline the ablatives of agent okay so in other words those by phrases but look what it says here warning one sentence contains a booby trap what that means is is that one of them is going to use ab a ah, as the actual prepositional phrase rather than identifying the ablative of agent so watch out for that and then in exercise 209 the faith was being kept by many renowned Christians. So hopefully you can identify the ablative of agent quickly. Was being kept, right? That's going to be a imperfect passive third singular, right? The faith was being kept. So uh, thank you for your attention today. Uh, keep up the good work. Hopefully we'll try to do a live class maybe sometime next week. So watch out for me posting the details for that on the LMS page. It'll give you an invitation and just at the proper time you click on it and you'll have to enter a password and we'll have a class together. All right. All right. Blessings to you all.